this is a typewriter. I think you've maybe seen it before, or maybe most young people have not seen a typewriter ever before. This is Microsoft Word. You have seen this before. You probably see it almost every day. What's the difference between a typewriter and Microsoft Word? Well, for my students, there doesn't seem to be much difference. They just open up Microsoft Word and start typing like it's a typewriter. If they need to move something in the middle, how do they do it? Space, space, space. Just the way we used to do it 50 years ago with a typewriter. How do they put things in the center? Uh, move it around a little bit and try to guess or push that button that says center. Besides that, I don't have any idea. What I want to focus on in the next few lessons is using Microsoft Word for research writing. So specifically, there's a few parts we're going to focus on. And these parts are the key points where Microsoft Word is actually very strong, where it does a very good job, but where I think you have not been using the features that count the most. We're going to be using Microsoft Word for research writing specifically, and then we're going to look at how do we handle our citations and reference material? What's a great way to do that? Probably you've been using something at your school or that most likely, if you're like the students I know, other students handed it down to you. It's stolen software and you don't know exactly what it does and maybe it's called EndNote. But I'm gonna show you something that you don't need to steal that is already open and free and is way better than anything you can buy anyway. Style Sheets is where Word really shines. So we're going to have a tutorial just on Style Sheets. Then we're going to look at graphics. So in your research writing, you're going to have some figures, some graphics. How do you bring that into Word? How do you do that? How do you format that? Most of my students, they'll use Microsoft Word's drawing feature, which just blows my mind because Microsoft Word does a lot of things really, really well. That's the reason it took over the market. Drawing is not one of them. And I'm sure you've seen it. They draw, some of your classmates draw lines here or there, and then save it, and you take it to another computer, or they give it to you, or you give it to a teacher, they open it up and everything's moved around, jumped around, the lines don't even line up right. That's horrible. So we're gonna be looking at Microsoft Word's graphics. When we look at the graphics, I'm going to also introduce two programs. One is going to be for making uh, flow charts and uh, graphics that are really great for research diagrams. And another one is about time management or Gantt, because we often can use Gantt inside of our research proposals, Gantt charts, and even in our research uh, writing, we can have Gantt charts. But certainly you can use Gantt charts when you're talking to your professor. So I'm gonna quickly touch on those, but the main point is how do you bring graphics like from those programs into Microsoft Word? And of course, we always have lots of tables in our research writing, our report writing. So how do we format the tables? How do we do the tables? And I'm going to be focusing on using APA style guide. There are many style guides, of course, but I'm going to focus on APA and show you how to maximize Word for APA style guides. And then the last part is going to be citation management. So for citation management, we have some great software you can use for citations. And I want to show you how to use those citations, save your time, save your trouble, and you don't have to go stealing it or buying it or borrowing it or begging for it. And then after you graduate, you can still use it because it's for free and open.